today's video, we're gonna be talking all about hair. It's gonna be a little different for this channel because I'm usually focused more on makeup. But today, I am gonna show you how I dye my hair at home and how I've been doing it for the last at least five years. And I'm gonna show you uh, how I pick my color and why I choose that color. And I'm gonna make you feel more secure when you're making the decision of what kind of hair color or what color or what peroxide you're going to use. Before I go any further, I wanna thank all of you that have been supporting this channel during this time. And the fact that so many of you have subscribed and you've left the best comments and feedback to me. And I want you all to know that I am taking them very seriously under consideration. Like you wanna see more realistic a makeup application and color application and you want me to get closer to the camera and focus more on what I'm doing and that's exactly what I'm going to do and a matter of fact in this video the color application on my hair I get so close like you can't get any more close and personal than that you guys are gonna see everything <laughs> so um if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet go ahead subscribe i feel like we're making a nice family here and it's just a nice community where we can relate to each other and talk about everything beauty and if you're new my name is christy and i'm really happy you're here so like i was saying today is all about hair and i know right now it's kind of difficult right to cover those grays or just to touch up that regrowth that we may have. I did make a video on how I highlighted my hair and chose my bleach, but I didn't want to include it in this video not to make it too long. So the next video that I'm going to be uploading is going to be all about highlights and bleach and how I do it. So stay tuned for that as well. As we start to talk about hair color application, I'm going to show you how to pick the perfect color for you following five steps. Now these five steps, um, were taught to me and I can imagine to so many other hair colorists. I was a hair colorist for Schwarzkopf, so that's why you're going to be hearing me referring back to that brand because they educated me and I educated others with that knowledge that they gave me about color. So you're gonna hear me mentioning that because I'm really, it's my favorite hair color brand. So that's the brand I'm gonna be speaking about. But what we're gonna talk about is just universal hair color theory. It doesn't matter what brand you buy or you use, what I'm gonna to talk to you about today, as a hair colorist, I can tell you, it's just basic color theory. So you don't have to worry about, oh, she's using one brand and I have a different one. It doesn't matter, it's all the same, okay? Um, and whatever could be different, I'm gonna tell you. Before we go into the steps that I wanna show you, let's analyze this numbering system this first number just to make it simple this first number that you see here is always going to refer to how light or dark this color this tube of hair color is going to make your hair for example if you if the tube of color has black pigment in there this will probably be a number one this first number before the hyphen. Sometimes it's divided by a slash, sometimes it just has a point. In this case, it's a hyphen. So right, this one is a five. So that means that the hair is a medium brown. If it was a one, it would be a black. The numbering system goes from the darkest hair color, which would be a black, would be number one. The lightest hair color, which would be like a, extreme, a very light blonde, is going to be like a 10. So in the middle, you'd have like that medium brown. That's how come it's a five. So anything after that number refers to what color direction or what tone is inside this. So now I let's go right into the first question that you'll be asking yourself. The first question is going to be, and it's what your hair colorist probably notices as soon as you sit in her chair and she sees you for the first time. And it's what you're going to ask yourself. What natural hair level am I? In this case, we talked about the hair level that you want to be, right? Which is on the box. But what natural hair level are you? Which one were you born with? What is the your, your color level? before you apply any hair dye to your hair, your virgin hair color. In my case, I'm a level five. After you ask yourself what hair number level you are on, 
you're probably saying, why is that important and exactly what is it? So that again just means how light or dark your natural hair color is, right? So I'm not very proud of this, but I do not have my hair swatches here. They're actually in my salon in Puerto Rico. So there is no way I am getting my hands on one of those now. But I did print this out and I'm gonna have something similar linked in the description box below and all the products that I'll be mentioning or using, I'll have in the, in the description box below linked. So this, I just printed it out and this has the different levels of hair. Like I said, this one on the bottom is black. So it's number one. This one on the top is 10 lightest blonde or extra blonde. So it's number 10. And in the middle, you'll have number five. And I'm gonna talk about number five because that is my natural hair level. And it's right in the middle, so it's a perfect example. And if you wanna be really sure, what you can do is just take this and you could just put it on your regrowth and compare it to your hair level that your regrowth and you will get the hair level that you are. And that brings us to the second step. And you're saying, why do I need to know that? And now you're gonna find out. In your second step, you're going to choose what hair level you want to be after you dye your hair. Do you want to be lighter or do you want to be darker than your natural hair level? Now, when I am talking to you about changing your hair color, I am coming from a place where I think and I hope that you consider your hair to be normal, healthy hair. This means that you know that your hair can tolerate a chemical process, that it is not going to dry out by any means, that you haven't chemically processed your hair so much that it cannot be treated, that you know that you do not have allergic reactions to these chemical products. If you are not sure, you can do a couple of things. You can call your hair colorist or, this, or, or you should have some kind of way to contact the person that did your hair previously and ask them if they know if certain products um, it make you have an adverse reaction or if you are allergic to them. Or you can do a strand or patch test in the back of your hair, apply a little bit of the product to the back of your head where nobody can see it, process it the time that it needs to be processed. And then you'll know not only if you have a chemical, um, an adverse reaction to the chemicals, but also if that is the color that you actually want to be applying to your hair. So that's, those are some ways that you could get around that. Okay, so our second step is going to be, like I said, you're gonna see if you wanna be lighter or darker. And I would recommend that if you're coloring your hair at home, try to maintain yourself maybe two levels lighter or two levels darker or on the same level. Just don't go to extremes. You don't wanna do an extreme change when you're at home doing it yourself because if something doesn't come out right, you may find yourself in a situation where you don't know what to do. You'll have to order your product, wait and for a few days until your product gets to you. So to prevent that from happening, let's just maintain ourselves close to what our natural level is or something similar to what you already have in your hair. This is also important. When you're choosing your level of hair that you want to be on, know this, and this is a fact, it, and it happens with any kind of hair brand. You cannot lighten hair that has been previously dyed with another hair dye. For example, if I decide that I, um, let's, let's just say in a hypothetically that my hair is a dark brown, to dark brown and I have regrowth maybe an inch of regrowth and I decide you know what I don't want to be a dark brown anymore I want to be a medium brown and I decide that I'm going to apply this to my hair what's going to happen is I'll have that perfect medium brown on my regrowth because that's virgin hair and on the rest of the strands of the hair so from here all the way down the dark brown is basically going to stay the same. And I know you've seen it on other women. I know you've seen it that they have lighter regrowth that's just been dyed and the rest of the hair is dark. That's because they tried to lighten the hair that has been previously dyed with a permanent hair dye with another, per another dye. So hair dye over hair dye does not lift levels. 
it's never gonna happen. The only way to actually lift your hair level, so what I'm saying, making it lighter, is to use some kind of bleach or a different product. But it's not gonna be with another hair dye that's just lighter, it's not gonna happen. So after I choose what level I wanna be on, that's gonna tell me now a very important step. What peroxide am I gonna use? And when we're So you have four choices of peroxide. And how do you know which one you're gonna choose? It's really easy. If you, you choose a volume 10, that means that you're only going to deposit color. And I know a lot of you have heard this. When you deposit hair color, you're not lifting levels like we were just talking about, right? So if I'm a level five and I deposit color, I'm gonna either stay on a level five or I can go darker. So I'm depositing color and that I do it with a volume 10 peroxide and in a second I'll explain what how that works if I choose to if I'm a level five and I choose to be a level six I am going to use a volume 20 and I'm going to explain why volume 10 deposits color it makes it darker or stays the same. Volume 20 will only lift from one to one and a half levels of color. Volume 30 will only lift from two to two and a half levels of color. Volume four, um, 40 will only lift from three to three and a half levels of color and maybe, just maybe, four levels. Okay, so what does that mean? That means a lot. That means that if I'm a level five and I wanna be darker, I'll use a volume 10 peroxide, or if I wanna stay the same. That means that if I wanna come up only one level and be a level six, I'm going to use volume 20 peroxide because it'll take me one to one and a half levels of color. So it won't completely make me a seven. If I wanna be a level seven, I have to use volume 30, which will lift from two to two and a half levels of color. You see, one, two. If I wanna be a level eight, I have to use a volume 40, which is going to lift to three, to three and a half levels, and maybe, just maybe, it might get me to a level nine because sometimes it'll get you four levels. So what does that mean? If I wanna be a level 10, can I get there using a regular hair dye and a peroxide, even the highest peroxide, which is 40, nope, I won't get there. I have to use a special product for that or I have to bleach my hair to get there. That's what that means. I'll so all this information linked below, I'll write it out for you so you can understand it and refer back to it when you're choosing your hair color. And I think if you understand this, when you go to the drugstore or the supermarket and you're actually choosing your your hair color and you see on the back of the boxes sometimes it says um if your hair color is this level well it won't say it it'll show you the actual hair color well this is the way the result will be and they'll give you like three 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 situations if your hair is this color, this is the way it's gonna be. If it's this color, this is the way the result is gonna be. And they show you, that based on your hair level or your hair color, that's what your result is going to be. So now you understand why. Because if our natural level is darker or lighter, that's gonna affect the way these two products work together. Now, another thing to take in consideration when you're choosing your peroxide is that if you're gonna use a volume 10 or 20, you'll process that as a rule of thumb for 30 minutes. If you're going to use a volume 30 or 40, you're gonna let that process on the hair for 45 minutes. Why do I speak about these two products together? Is because this product is not gonna work without this one. And that goes for any hair brand. The hair dye needs the peroxide, the peroxide needs the hair dye. Um, inside the tube of hair dye, you're gonna have ammonia and the hair pigment and the pigment that you're gonna be applying to your hair. And some brands won't use ammonia, maybe they'll use something natural, but basically it's ammonia. Because ammonia is what's going to open the hair cuticle. The hair strand has three layers. You're gonna have a cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. So the cuticle has to be opened to be able to penetrate the color, the new color that you're applying to your hair. And the way it's gonna be opened is with the ammonia that's in the tube of color. Then the pigment goes in, but 
you need the peroxide for the pigment to get in there. The peroxide is like a vehicle that's going to transport that pigment into the cortex of the hair, which inside the cortex of your hair is where you have your natural hair color and all the things that characterize your hair. So when we talk about the peroxides then, and you say, well, I have four different peroxides to choose from, just visualize this. Let's visualize four cups of water. Each cup of water represents one per, ten, uh, volume 10 peroxide. The second cup is going to, per, to represent 20 peroxide. The third cup, 30 per, volume peroxide. And the fourth cup is going to represent 40 volume peroxide. So in cup number one, I'm going to put one Alka-Seltzer in it and it's gonna make some bubbles. In cup number two, I'm going to put two Alka-Seltzers in it. Visualize that. And it's gonna make double the bubbles. In the third cup of water, and they all have the same amount of water, I am going to put three Alka-Seltzers. So I'm gonna make triple the bubbles, right? And in the fourth cup, I'm going to put four Alka-Seltzers and it's going to make quadruple the amount of bubbles. Now you, that you can visualize the amounts of bubbles that are in our imaginary cups, imagine now that those are hair strands. When I apply, when I apply now my hair color to the hair, they're in, in, in cup number one or in my hair strands with the volume 10 peroxide. There's some, some, there's some bubbles, but there's a lot of color pigment, so it'll make my hair darker. Volume 20, there's a double the amount of bubbles, so I have a little bit more room for the bubbles and a little bit less room for pigment so it'll make my hair a little bit lighter but if i have volume 30 that's even more bubbles and less room for the pigment so my hair is even going to appear lighter so when i use volume 40 there's a whole bunch of bubbles and not that much room for my color pigment in the tube so my hair is going to really be able to get lighter you understand how we're working here more bubbles less pigment, lighter hair. That represents volume 40, okay? So that's how the peroxide works, just to give you a logic behind it. So when you're choosing it, you're always gonna remember, higher volume of peroxide, more bubbles, this is gonna make my hair lighter. Okay, so we already did our step one, which is our starting point. What is our natural level? Our step two, where do we wanna go? What's gonna be our target level? How light or dark we wanna make our hair color? And that's gonna tell us our step three. What peroxide do we choose? Step three, we know which peroxide, how much developing time I need. And step, which is step four, is going to be what is my color direction? Do I wanna be a redhead? Do I wanna have an ash tone? Do I want to have um, a violet tone? Do I wanna be a copper? Do I want, you get to choose what is the color direction you want. And this could be really simple and I'm going to make it, or it could be complicated, but I wanna make it really simple. I know you've all seen the color wheel and especially in hair salons, you see the color wheel. And on the color wheel, you're gonna have yellow on the top and you'll have purple on the bottom. That means that if you have yellow, maybe brassy tones in your hair or too golden, you can cancel them out with a hair dye that has a base that is purple. If you have orange brassy hair and you wanna cancel that out, you're going to use what's on totally the other side of that color wheel, which is um, blue, and you'll be able to cancel that out with any hair dye that has a base uh, that is blue. If your hair looks too red, you'll be able to cancel that out with what's on exactly the other side, which is green, and cancel out any of those red tones. If you choose a hair dye that has a matte or green hair base to it. So when we're talking about that, we could go back to this tube of color. And sometimes you'll see that it'll say, I'm just referring to five zero because it's what I have in front of me, but it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, before the hyphen. What I'm talking about is the color that's coming, the number that's coming after it. So it could be five zero. So that would be a natural direction of color, like a natural tone. It could say five one. One would mean ash. I'll have all this information linked below. It could say five hyphen two, which would mean like a smoky hair color. It could say five three, which is a matte or green based color. It could say five four, which maybe is like a beige color, which can kind of cancel out any of those brassy, very warm tones, but not that much. 
So anything that that is below five, like one, two, three, four, five, one being ash, two smoky, three matte green, for a beige, once you get to five, you're not canceling out any of those brassy tones that you could get in your hair because all those first um, numbers that I mentioned are cool tone based, so they'll cancel out brassiness. Now, after, so if it says five, six, five, six is like an auburn chocolatey color that has more of those red, beautiful autumn tones to it. So that's going to, if, if you need to cancel out brassiness, this is just gonna, that a five, five, a five, six will only emphasize it more. It could look very beautiful if that's what you're going for, but it's not canceling out, it will emphasize it. Closer the, fur, the number is to the hyphen, that's the intensity, that's where you're gonna have major intensity of color. The further it is away, that's just, you're gonna just gonna have a reflex of color. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the first num the first number or letter after the level, that's your ma your major tone. Anything after that is just some secondary colors that you're gonna see in your hair that could look very beautiful. That's the color wheel, basically very simplified, very, I'm just trying to make it as simple as I can because I know sometimes it can be overwhelming, but it really doesn't have to be. Just the last step, and the last step is really easy. It's just, and it, but, it's equally important. You have to identify what is the percentage of gray that you have in your hair. Usually hair dyes come in 100% hair co um, gray coverage or less than or 50% hair gray hair coverage. So you have to choose. Like I know in my hair and you're going to see in the application, I have less than 30% gray in my hair. So I can kind of play with what colors I'm going to choose or even if I'm going to use a semi-permanent, demi-permanent or temporary hair color. Apply a product that is not 100% gray coverage to hair that has over 50% gray. Um, you're not going to cover your gray and you're going to wash your hair once or twice and the gray is going to be there and you'll probably notice it from the first application you won't cover it because gray hair isn't just an empty strand of hair that empty like it's not and yet it has a color in it. It's not just empty. Inside that cortex, there's some, some yellow pigment. Yellow melanin, natural yellow melanin in the hair is very hard to get rid of. It's a very big color molecule. It's very hard to get rid of. So when you're choosing your peroxide to cover gray, as a rule of thumb, you're usually going to go in with volume 30 peroxide and you're gonna leave it on there for 45 minutes with a hair color, which this is it, this is one, this will color 100% gray. And, um, and that's how you cover gray. So it's very important to know how much you have. I also wanna mention before I go on to show you my color application, there are websites, like I think one is called eColor, um, and there are others where you can answer um, certain questions on their website and they'll they'll formulate the color for you and send it to you with everything that you need to color your hair if you really feel unsure about choosing your hair color i think that's a great way to go have somebody formulate it for you and send it to you or you like i said call your hair colorist but there are ways around actually ordering from a beauty supply but if you're going to do it do it like this, just ask yourself those five questions and you'll be able to choose your color wisely. And I think you'll have a pretty good um, result. I'm coloring my hair, the first thing that I wanna have is all the tools that, tools that I'm going to need. I'm going to need a color, a mixing bowl. I'm going to need a brush. I, I like to weigh my, my hair dye, so I'll probably have a scale, but you could also just measure it. And most hair dyes, depending on the brand that you're gonna use, if you mix one to one, in this case, um, I'm mixing one to one. That means that if I use an ounce of a hair color, I'm going to use an ounce of peroxide. So when you see one to one, that's what that means. I After I mix it, I divide my hair into four sections. I'm gonna be using these little ponytails because it's just neater, but you could also use any, just any hair clip. It's really important to section off your hair with nice, clean sections. I use four sections and have a, uh, a comb that so you can divide those sections when you're looking to see how much regrowth you have, how much gray you have, I'm just going to be applying the hair dye to where I have 
um, gray coverage. But if you were applying this to your hair on all of your hair on your whole head, what you would do is you would start in the front and work your way around all the perimeter of your hair in the back right down the part that you made everywhere that you have perimeter that's where you're going to apply the color first then you start on the top just like i'm doing in the center and when you're sectioning off each piece you want to make sure that you section it off or slice it um, thin enough where it looks like a veil of hair that you can actually see right through not too thick because if you make it too thick you're going to apply too much product and you don't want to apply too much product to your hair because first off you don't want to overlap that means that you don't want the hair dye to go from your scalp and overlap on top of the other hair dye that you had applied previously because you may be left with some sort of mark on it or something that looks like a band and you don't want that so you want to come right over and just go over it just a little bit second if you're just um, doing your regrowth and not covering your highlights you don't want to cover your highlights too much because then it's really going to be noticeable that you dyed your hair and your regrowth and you didn't touch up your highlights if you're not touching up highlights so just know that go in and be nice and neat go right close to you the part of your hair to your scalp come down the amount necessary not more than that and you're going to do this all over your hair starting in the front on the top working your way down on each side when you get to the back maybe you need somebody to help you and you'll have to either use a mirror where you can see the front and the back have a mirror in the back as well or have somebody help you which i think is your best bet um to apply it at least to the back of your hair and in my case i'm using a demi permanent hair color so i can let it process only for 20 minutes and i'll be fine um also before you wait those minutes if you have anything to clean up around the edges go ahead and clean it up now because you that will stain your face for a little while for a couple of days at least and also always remember to wear gloves while you're applying especially a darker hair color because it'll stain your hands and your nails and they will be stained for a couple of days so after waiting the 20 minutes i washed it off i dried my hair and this is the end result as you can see it's nice and shiny and the gray is well blended i wouldn't say that it covered 100 percent because that was not my intention either it kind of blends with my hair and when i apply my highlights it's um it just blends beautifully with the hair and i don't really have to cover 100 percent with a permanent hair dye i actually like it this way but you can see i need to touch up my highlights because they were grown out to begin with so this is the end result of the hair color i i hope this information is really useful i think especially now it's really useful to a lot of women and and even guys sometimes so i i really do you I hope you appreciate this information this is a subject that i love i was a hair colorist for a really long time and it's something that made me happy to do it just it it just made my job a lot easier to go to work doing something that i love to do so with that said, if you have any questions or comments or a particular situation that you would like my input on, go ahead, leave me a comment here, or you can do it on Instagram, or you can do it on YouTube. I'll have everything linked below. You can send me a picture and your and what products you're using, and I can help you. I used to do it all the time. Salons used to call me and tell me, I have a situation, and these are the products that I have. How can you help me? And we resolve it over the phone. So I'm sure we can do it here as well. Also, if you guys need this in Spanish, I can make this video in Spanish for you or just ask me the question in Spanish and I can give you your answer in Spanish. I have no problem with that as well. So yeah, I hope this was useful. And I always say it, if you know somebody that can benefit from this video, especially this one, because sometimes it's just eyeshadow and it's just fun. But I think when it comes for at least me, when it's dyeing my hair covering gray, it's necessary. So if you know somebody that can benefit from this video, go ahead, share it with them, like it, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.